In this video, let's see what it takes to create a jump animation. So I just created this just as a quick test. And let's see if we can recreate um, this guy jumping sort of in a similar uh, manner, maybe not exactly the same, but something like this. So let me show you how I did this. So I'm going to reset my scene and start from the beginning. All right, so here we are in Maya and you have a blank scene. The first thing you want to do is grab a rig. So you can either, if you have one, um, bring that into your scene. If you can download one on the web, that's fine. If you don't, you can go to Windows and General Editors and go to Content Manager or Content Browser. In Content Browser under Examples and Animation, you have something called Rigs. And here you have two females and two males. So you can drag whoever you want onto your um, grid. I'm just going to grab uh, this guy here and just drag him on. All right, then I'm going to close my content browser. And if you click on this button here, you can see that Outliner comes up. If you press on your uh, rig, his name is Eric. I'm going to click on Eric and press F on my keyboard. I will frame him into my view, which is great. I can now press this button here to turn on my textures. So Eric has really nice uh, textures. And next, what I'm going to do is go to my um, Human IK tab, and you can press this button here to turn it on. All right, so now let's create the uh, jump animation. So in my case, I'm going to leave this at 20 frames per second. And what I've done in my previous test, I set my timeline to 48, which is uh, 48 frames, right? 48 frames at 24 frames per second. So essentially, this is a two second uh, jump animation, right? And if you press play, you can sort of get a sense of timing uh, of what it feels like coming from beginning to end. So this is about two seconds, okay? So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go to my human IK here and I'm going to turn off my FK which is the forward kinematics and I only um, for now let's let's make sure that our this button is pressed which is the controllers the animation controllers or if you look in the bottom left it says uh, IK which is inverse kinematics right so inverse kinematics just means if you drag a slider the whole body will follow uh, if you use this button here instead and let's make sure that this is on as well so we can actually see our skeleton the uh, forward kinematics just means um, if you bend a joint the body will not follow you're only dealing with that one joint okay so that's the difference and this you don't need because this is just for uh, weights uh, weight painting so we don't actually need this for animation so you can turn that off and these two buttons are um, good for if, if you want to focus on a specific body part or if you want the whole body to be affected. So I'm actually going to select the entire body and I'm going to make sure that my um, IK is on, right, my controllers. I'm going to click on all the controllers and press S on my keyboard. As soon as I press S, you can see a little red mark appears. So that means keyframe is set. Make sure that this button is on as well. This is your auto keyframe toggle. This will automatically set keys for us as we move our character or um, pose him, right? So the first thing I would like to do is set him into a better position. And uh, for jumping, I'm actually going to go into my FK and all I need to do is just simply bring his arms down so he doesn't look so he's not in his T pose, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch back to um, IK here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his fingers and just rotate them in just so he looks a little more human like and not so robotic. All right, so maybe this is a better pose for our jumping guy. All right, so next, what I'd like to do is select all the controllers. And I'm going to go to frame 48 and press S as well. So now frame 0 and 48 are identical, right? Which means we can do stuff in the middle, but we need to, we uh, are now certain that 0 and 48 will be the same. As it loops, um, it's going to have a nice smooth transition. 
So at frame 10, let's pose him into some sort of um, anticipation of jumping, right? So if I drag him, you see he's moving around, right? Uh, I need to make sure that this button is not pressed. I'm going to uncheck this. And if I uncheck it, you could see on your human IK that the legs are actually pinned, right? So the, both the left and the right leg are pinned, which means if I try to move my character, you can see that the leg, he stays on the ground flat, right? And I, I actually need this in order for me to pose him bending down. As soon as I uh, press this button, then you can see now Maya is ignoring the pins and the, this is going to be useful in a minute, but not yet. So I'm going to push him bending down. Maybe he does something like this. Let's just do your best to put your character in some sort of a jumping pose where he is getting some momentum. So obviously this is not realistic because he's moving forward way too much. So I'm going to move him back. And I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe I can even make his head a little lower. Okay, so great. So now, now we have something like this. We have him standing. Then he comes down. He's ready to jump. And now what I'd like to do is I want to launch him up in the air. So let's do a shortcut. I'm going to grab all of the controllers. Right click on keyframe zero and copy. I'm going to go to frame 15 and what I'm going to do is right click and say paste. Okay. So essentially what I just did is I cheated because I want him to go from this pose to beginning to fly up. All right. And what I'm going to do now is maybe on frame 18, I actually need to make sure that he's not pinned. So I'm going to release all pins. And I'm just going to simply grab my move tool and just move him up. And I want him to do a relatively tall jump, just so it's a little more exaggerated for our example here. All right, as he is up in the air, I want to grab both of his ankles here and point them down. And maybe his head is looking up. So he's got really launching up. Almost in a cartoon-like manner, right? So he's got... So he goes from this to up, and then as he is up, maybe he is actually suspended in the air for a few seconds. And we can adjust the timing in a minute, but let's grab all the controllers and actually copy 18, and maybe let's suspend them in the air for a little bit. So he's sort of in the same position. And then we, what we want is we want to bring him back down. So let's copy, right click and copy frame 15 and go to like just give him a little bit we can move these around but let's paste this in here so now he's in the air then he comes down and next what we want to do is grab 10 uh, frame 10 because we want him kind of bending back down and maybe a little bit slower so maybe this one is a little further away so he's kind of coming down but he's a little slower than taking off so let's see what we got So that's kind of cool, right? Now, the only other thing that I did in my previous test is I also wanted to show you guys how to um, in include uh, layers, animation layers into uh, something like this. So let's do this. Let's select all the controllers. Let's go to our channel box, go to the animation tab, and let's go ahead and click on this button here create layer from selected. That gives us a base, which you could see your keyframes that you just set on the base and the new layer on top. As soon as you click on the new layer, you could see that nothing is here, right? And what I would like to do is go to my human IK and, and switch between the full body to just the body part. I now just want to focus only on the body part. And I'm going to go back to the channel box, go to my empty layer, and let's do this. As he jumps up, right about here, 
let's set a key on both of his arms. So I'm going to press S. And now we can do something here. And then when he comes back down, I want his arms kind of coming back together. So I'm going to press S again. So what I just did is I created two keyframes holding this, these, um, both of these arms in place, just like they are now. But now if I go somewhere here when he's in the air, just for the sake of fun, let's maybe move his arms up. So he's a little more animated and you can you know move them forward or back whatever you like I just want to see what happens when I do this so essentially I created the layer right which controls only his arms nothing else and now if we pre press play we can see that he does this thing with his arms as he comes down and maybe if we wanted to make it even more dramatic as he comes down right here Maybe the arms could even be higher up. So something like this. All right, so let's see what that looks like. And maybe I can delete actually this keyframe if I didn't like how that looks. And I need to make sure that they are both selected. So both of these, let's delete this keyframe here and let's see what that does. We press play. It's kind of cool. He kind of puts his arms out and you can play around and see uh, what works. This is a little silly, obviously. He's doing kind of so sort of a They're down, and then he comes up, and maybe here, for some reason, they're sort of going forward. You know, maybe I don't want them to be forward. Maybe I want them to be more sideways. You can make your own adjustments, but like he, he's down, then he's to the side, then they're kind of up, and then they come back down. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, this is what I was going for. So that that's pretty cool. Maybe he's trying to fly up and it's clearly not working. Uh, Eric is just now learning about gravity. But uh, the cool thing about layers, again, uh, we can turn this off. So if I mute, mute the layers, you can see that all the work that we did with the arms is actually muted. Um, we can unmute it and we can also do weight. So maybe the arms are too crazy. Maybe this is zero, right? There's no weights on his arms but now I can increase it just a little bit and now there's a little movement so maybe this is a little more realistic now if I move it all the way up he does this crazy swing but on the final animation let's say I like it halfway so it's a little more organic all right and now if we needed to preview this we can turn off all the controllers we can go to hide our joins and we can just focus on the character and see what he looks like. So as you can see this is a really cool and fun way to uh, create animations. Now if we wanted to export him into let's say a game engine all we need to do is just simply make sure that Eric is selected all the mesh. You hold down the control key and select the uh, the rig right and make sure that the rig is visible so you can see it let's turn this button on actually this button we want to when you export make sure that your skeleton is on so you can actually see the skeleton because uh, all of this is irrelevant uh, the controllers do not go into the game engine so you want to make sure that the skeleton is on and you want to make sure that you actually select it on export right so that's important and then so the skeleton is this here, and then you want to make sure that the actual geometry is selected. So you actually don't need the locate the locators. All you need is this these two, and this would be actually used in the game engine. So now if you export this out, you want to make sure. Let's say you're in FBX right format. You want to make sure that your animation is clicked, and you want to make sure that your bake animation is clicked. 
And the animation that we just set up is from 0 to 48. So make sure this uh, is the same as this, right? 0 to 48. And now if we if we export this out, uh, the, the animation will be baked to the actual skeleton. So then in the game engine, it will actually uh, work. And it will not be driven by the animation controllers, right? So that's how uh, quick, fun, and easy this was. I hope you found it uh, useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.